Uh, Minister Helen, you're very welcome into the chamber today, and thank you here. Look, I want to thank the senators of Fine Gael for tabling this motion and giving us the opportunity to have some form of debate about the real issues at play here. In the hope of not being constantly hounded for qualifications to my following statements, here they are all in front of you. Racism is abhorrent. Violence is wrong. Crime should be punished. With that out of the way, let's run quickly through quite a few points. Firstly, on Taoiseach's uh, statement yesterday that it is not right to connect immigration with crime is ridiculous. Not all emigrants are created equal, and an immigration policy that does not recognise this will end in disaster and tragedy. We don't record crime statistics by ethnicity, because to do so would offend liberal sensibilities, but other European countries do. The Dutch do. They've done it for 10 years, and here's what they've found. Individuals from non-Western immigration background make up 14% of the population in the Netherlands. However, they commit 40% of all crime and violent assaults. Populations from Africa or the Middle East tend to exhibit rates of two to four times higher than those of native Dutch. And in both Germany and Spain, the suspect rate of Algerian immigrants for crimes is 10 times that of natives, and in Italy it is 17 times. And Ireland has the largest groups of Algerian asylum seekers in the world being admitted into the country. Asking us not to, asking us not to commit, connect crime to emigration is asking us to ignore reality. These are official statistics published by other EU governments. They are factual and true. Are they hate speech? I fear, Minister, under you and your bill, they might well be investigated as such. I have long said that this government would rather receive a pat on the back from Brussels than a clap on the back from the Irish, and that so often we need to get serious issues in this country to attract attentions from the international media before the me government will do anything about them, because the government only listens to the media and not to the people. Well, now Ireland has the eyes of the world on it, and they're posed to see how this country is being turned into a post-democratic EU vassal state, which is about to pass censorship legislation, the likes of which we have never seen in the West, so that its government will be protected from the criticism of the people it is elected to govern. Maybe, maybe, that will pause, give them pause for thought, but I won't hold my breath. But for now, we'll do the best we can. Minister, this morning you accused the opposition in the Dáil of having no solutions. Here are quite a few to solve our problems. We need an assignment processing centre at Dublin Airport, a fully equipped facility with dedicated judges, clerks and civil services. People who come into the country seeking asylum are processed there within seven days of arrival. If they're accepted, all good. If they're found against, they're put on the first plane home. But that will take time. In the meanwhile, applicants should be summoned to court to have their application, right to remain, result handed down to them. Accepted, all good, denied, taken to the Garda station and custody and put on the first plane home. No more self-service deportation orders. You're the Department of Justice, not Tex Tesco. Massive fines for airlines who do not meet highly stringent criteria for the checking of travel documents and ensuring legality of travel for passengers. Even if we can't trust the government, we can, trust, we can always trust companies to protect their bottom lines. At this moment, I think it's €3,000. Put that figure up to 15000 and we'll see how many uh, breach that uh, checking of their documents. The Minister wants to put rioters and, lo lo and looters in prison. What prison? All of them are full. Our new prison, Thornton Hall, needs to be built as soon as possible. Anything less than this, the government is not serious about law and order. I understand Commissioner Drew Harris brought 12 PSNI officers down with him when he took up the post. Let's get more. What a great shared island initiative that would be. I know that there are members of the PNSNI that are living here in the Republic of Ireland who would welcome a transfer down here to Angartha Siakana if we're having difficulty in recruiting numbers. So give them the option. If we can borrow water cannons from the north, we can surely 
take some of their officers and their personnel as wives. Give the rank and file officers of the PNSI an opportunity to transfer to under Garda Síochána if they so wish. I think it would be a brilliant shared island initiative. I also call for you, Minister, today to put some financial supports in place for the private businesses who were victims of the riots last week. You should also provide victim support and counselling for the students, the teachers and all members of those businesses who had to hide in closets behind closed doors on that night, or indeed any member of our emergency services who were psychologically affected by last Thursday's events. There are many ways we could handle this. I don't have time to go through everything that could be done, but none of it will be done, of course, because this government and your government can't see beyond the end of their nose. They behave as if they are mentally incapable of foresight. They can only ever react, never act proactively. I reject this motion, not because I don't want to see anything done, because I know this government will never do what needs to be done.